did you come here to become a better speaker? Okay, most of you. The rest of you are in the wrong room. <laughs> you want to become a better speaker, right? That's the whole goal. That's why you come to Toastmasters. That's why you're here. That's why you do everything. But even though being a kind of better speaker is good, and I many years ago joined Toastmasters, I want to become a better speaker. So it started to occur to me, but I'm a better speaker, but am I a good speaker? You see, it's very easy to become a better speaker. I mean, if you start here as a speaker, and you go to here, you're a better speaker. But you're not really a good speaker. Or you start out here, and you go to here, you're a better speaker. But you're also probably a pretty good speaker, right? So how do you become a good speaker? Well, I know what you do in Toastmasters. You talk to people who are already good speakers. And in Toastmasters, it's easy to find them. The International Speech Contest has winners every year. One guy wins this whole worldwide contest. And so I started listening to these guys who are saying the same sort of thing that weren't in the Toastmasters manuals. Things they just hadn't really thought about. And the main point they're making is that many speakers focus on themselves. When you're up here, you focus on yourself. But really, it's about your audience. It's not about you, it's about your audience. And to me, that was mind blowing. You probably have already figured that out yourself on your own, but to me, it was mind blowing. It's like, wow, it's all about the audience. And distilling these ideas down, it came down to the idea of the four acts. So just as a play can have four acts, so your speech is four acts. A act to C act to T act and S act, you have to have all four acts to want to have a good speech. So today you're going to learn about the four acts and how to apply them in your speech. So the first act is the A act. It's the very first thing you do with the speech. And the first thing you want to do with the speech is get your audience's attention. So just write that down in your handout, which, as I mentioned, you don't have. Write that down in your handout. Attention. Because there's one question going through your audience's mind right from the very beginning. One question you probably think about any, any speaker you're listening to. You start thinking, who's the speech for? Right? Who's the speech for? Is the speech for me or for somebody else? This happens a lot in business presentations. Ever been in a business presentation and you thought, speech is not for me? And Lawrence knows that everyone else. Lawrence knows. Everybody else is lying. But Lawrence knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is not for me. What am I even doing here? Who is the speech for? So if you want to make sure people know the speech is for them, use the word you. Use the word you. I've been using the word you all the way throughout. And now you know the speech is entirely for you. Do it in your speech. Use the you. Use the you in your speech, you get your audience's attention. It's that simple. Once you get the audience's attention, and they say, okay, I know the speech is for me, great, fine. Then you come to the C act. The C act is about content. Content. So just write that down, content. Yeah, content. Because once you, have, you know who the speech is for, another question comes up in your audience's mind. The same sort of thing comes to you. Okay, I know who the speech is for. You're thinking, all right, I know the speech is for me, fine, great. But what's the problem? What's the problem? So what is the magical question here? You can also write that down. What? That's the key. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already done it, you write down the beginning attention, and also the question is who, write that down, and then use the you, write that down in your worksheet. But for the content, the question is what's the problem? Because if there isn't a problem, your audience probably doesn't see the reason for the speech. If you aren't addressing a problem in people's lives that really address what they want, what they need, what they're interested in, probably people are thinking, why am I here? Because you tell everybody everything's fine, people say, great. But then that means I didn't have to be here, and you're kind of wasting my time. Everything's wonderful, fine. But it was wonderful before I heard your 25-minute speech talking about how wonderful everything was. So what's the problem? And the way you identify problems is you make it very clear what that problem is. So you've got to define that problem. You've got to talk about it clearly. So defining the problem and getting at it I'm having one of those moments that Zena had. I'll come back to it. Do you want to define what that problem is? Because, got it. Because you want to grow the conflict. Grow the conflict. Most important thing you can do in any speech you're giving is grow the conflict. You've got a speech like this, it's flat, all the point problem, it doesn't grow the conflict. There's no problem, there's no issue. Of 
grow the conflict. Make the problem bigger and bigger and bigger. You just want to grow the conflict huger and huger and huger because you're building everything up for the T Act. The T Act comes after the problem. Say, okay, see so if you're going all the way so far, our story so far. Very beginning, to give the audience attention. Understanding who's the speech for. Use the you. The audience knows the speech about them. Great. The audience okay, about me. Got it. Then comes the C Act, content. You may want to find a different way to express it. <laughs> this is not working anymore. Maybe you'd like some other things might work. Like that. I'm just kidding. Uh, so you get the C Act, content. And you say, what's the problem? And you grow the content, big problem. And they say, okay, okay, now I need a T Act, a technique. Your audience is now screaming for a technique. Because think about it. You've probably been in a situation before where somebody said, okay, here's a problem. It's a big problem. It's a growing problem. It's a huge problem. It's a worldwide problem. It's going to destroy us all. You heard about this like yesterday, right? There's the latest Trump tweeted something. I think it caused the destruction of something or something somewhere. Huge problem. So your question is, okay, how do I solve the problem? You ever heard a speech which had a huge growing problem? And you thought, yeah, it's a really big problem. And then, then you thought, did they never explain how to solve it? You heard speeches like that? Any of maybe? Think about it. A lot of times you hear those speeches. It's a huge problem, but how do I solve it? I don't know how to solve a problem. Gee, I hope everything works out for you. It's going to be horrible. It doesn't. <laughs> how do I solve the problem? So you need to have a technique. You need to have a very clear technique. That's really it. You just give that technique, and then people get it. Okay, that's how you solve the problem. That's what you need to do. You need to have that, that action step that people need to take. For technique. Okay, you're almost there. And somebody will stop that. And they go, okay, that's it. I've got attention, I've got, I've got technique, <coughs> I've got it, they know how to solve the problem. Just go out and do it. I'll just solve the problem. No problem. But people are a little bit wired a little bit differently than that. Even if people know. All the way through, they said, how to solve the problem, there's still one act to go. And that's the S Act. And the S Act is so important because it's selling. You might be thinking, Tim, why do I need to sell? There's no need to sell. I've told them how to solve a problem. They aren't idiots. They can just go out there, use the technique, boom, it's done, it's finished. Why bother? But there is something you did as a kid, some question you asked to every time an adult told you to do something. Every time an adult told you to do something when you're this tall, you had one question you would ask every adult every time they told you to do something. It's a three letter question. It ends with W, it ends with Y. Anybody remember back all the way to that question you used to ask all the time? Why, right? Why? Why should I do that? Tommy, it's your bedtime. Why do I have to go to bed now? Susie, pick up your room. Why do I need to do that? Why? Your audience is wondering why. If you don't tell them why, they just they won't do it. They won't do it. They won't handle it. They won't even take any action on it. So you need to tell them, OK, here's why you should do it. And the simplest way to do that is just use the bad if you don't, good if you do. Bad if you don't, good if you do. And if you've been following along in the worksheet, so for the T act is technique, and then that's uh, how do I do it? Make sure I have a technique. And then for the S act is selling, it's bad if you don't, good if you do. How does that work? Well, it's really simple. It's just if you don't do what I'm talking about, bad things will happen. If you do what I'm talking about, good things will happen. And now that you think about it, probably you think a lot of times you've been sold that way. Let me see those late night infomercials. They talk about how horrible things are. Remember how you used to be when you were out there cooking and things would stick to the pan? It was awful and you had to chisel them off. Well, now with our new miracle grill, everything slides off. It's so easy. It's so simple. They do it all the time. Bad if you don't, good if you do. That will help sell your audience and get the point across. If you want to give a good speech, you want to have the four acts. It's that simple. And once you do the four acts, you're going to start having better speeches. First, the A act of attention. You have to get the audience's attention. And you get the audience's attention by using the you. Using the you. Because it asks that question, who is the speech for? 
who is this speech for? So that's what your audience is wondering, right at the very beginning. If you don't ask that question, who the speech is for, the audience won't pay any attention. Then the C act of content. What's the problem? What's the problem up there? You've got to have some sort of problem. And in order to have that problem be a big problem, you need to grow the conflict. Grow the conflict. Make the conflict bigger and bigger in your audience's mind so they start freaking out. Actually, it's a good thing for your audience freaks out a little bit. That's what you want to do. Scare your audience. Scared people are motivated and they start to take action better. And once you grow the conflict bigger and bigger and bigger, then you're getting ready for the T act. Technique. Technique. Because you want to make sure you have some sort of technique. Here's how to do it. Here's how I do it. So you just lay the technique on. Here's how you do it. That's it. And then the S act of selling. Selling. People tend to forget it, tend to neglect it, but it's the most important thing you can do up there because since you were a little kid, you were always wondering why. Why should I do that? Why should I bother? But you need to sell. And a simple way to sell is just bad if you don't, good if you do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's bad for you. If you do what I'm talking about, it's actually good for you. And once you start to use this simple technique, you'll find it transform your speaking. Since I've been using that, it's transformed my speaking and helped other people as a professional speech coach, other capacities, just by people thought that Silver Rule get their attention, know what the content is, have a technique, sell, to become better and better speakers all the time. Help you speaking tremendously, a simple, powerful method. When you get that new confidence, a new sense of what you're doing up there, then you won't be nervous or scared or afraid of what you're doing up there. You'll step out there powerfully, you'll command people, you'll pull your audience in, you'll grow people, you'll convince people, you'll sell them. You'll actually say afterwards, hey, great speech you get up there, and I'm starting to do what you're talking about. Boy, it's transformed my life. Once you have people talking about it, they transform your life, they make your life better, how you as a speaker are really making you, the world better, and everyone better? Well, that's just an incredible feeling. So if you really want to become a better speaker, make sure you use the four acts. Okay, thank you, Tim, for all that knowledge.